you was born in less time than it takes to sing this song. A fraction of a second, and the elements were made. The five that stood up straight, the dinosaurs all met their fate. They tried to leave, but they were late, and they all died. They closed their eyes and saw the ocean and the sea. I see a wooden bar to be a set in motion by the same big bang. It all started with a bang. We are going to teach you about stoichiometry and how to solve stoichiometry problems. Okay, today we'll be talking about stoichiometry. It's to determine how much product is formed of reactions consumed in the course of a chemical reaction. In other words, a calculation of relative quantity of the reactants and products in a chemical reaction, typically in ratio of energy or whole number. It is a portion of chemistry dealing with numerical relationships in chemical reactions. The calculation of quantities of substances involved in chemical equations. Okay, so there's three ways in figuring out the equations. There is mole to mole, which is one step. That's the easiest one. There's gram to mole, which is two steps. And then there's grams to grams, which is three steps. And that's the last one. <laughs> A fun fact about stoichiometry is that the term was first used by Germain Richer in 1792. And for our lesson, we'll be focusing mainly on grams to grams, which is the third step. How to calculate from grams to grams. First, you start off with the grams, then you go to the mole, and then you go to the mole ratio. You go back to the mole, and then you end up in grams. This might seem confusing, but we'll show you some examples. You get the mole ratio from a balanced equation, which is usually given. And you get the atomic mass which you need, but that is on the periodic table. So with all this information, you're able to convert grams to grams. And we'll show you some examples on how to do this. Here's the balance equation. We start with 20 grams. Of LiOH. How many grams? of LICL should I get? To solve the problem, you have to make sure the equation is balanced, which for this one it is. You have 20 grams of LiOH, and you look up the atomic mass for LiOH on the periodic table, which is 23.94 grams per mole, you divide it, get 0 0.835, which is the moles of LiOH. For this question, and it's balanced, so the mole ratio is 1 to 1, and it's also for the LiCl. To get a grams of LiCl, you have to multiply the moles of LiCl with the atomic mass of LiCl, which is 42.39 gram per mole, grams per mole, which equals to 35.416 grams of LiCl. That's the answer for the question. So we're going to start with what is given, which is 5 grams of oxygen. Then for this number here, we're going to look at the periodic table for the atomic mass of the oxygen, which is 32. And for each 32 grams of oxygen is one mole of oxygen. So here we're going to cancel it out with another mole of oxygen. We're going to find the mole ratio with the balanced equation, which is one. One mole of oxygen is equal to two moles of H2O. And from here, we're going to start with one mole of H2O to cancel that out. And we're going back to the periodic table to find the atomic mass of the compound, which would be 18. Then we multiply it across and then divide it, and we end up with 5.625 grams of H2O. Okay, right here we start off with silver nitrate and lithium nitrate. We put an equal amount of both into the containers. After we filled it up with both of the powders, we added water up to 150 liters. This is an equal amount so that the results will come out accurate and fairly.
The next step, we stir around the solution so that it is concentrated. And then just like, you're is that the right? After we stir around the solution, we wait until it is fully blended. When it is fully blended, we get copper and we roll it into a little ball. It is an equal amount so that again, it is accurate. After that, we add it to the solution. For the lithium nitrate, it sinks to the bottom automatically and there is no reaction. The copper stays the same, unlike the silver nitrate. Once we see that the reaction has finished, we empty out the water. By emptying out the water, we can clearly see what happened to the copper. The copper and silver nitrate, as you can see, turned darker and has a different pigmentation as the lithium nitrate. Lithium nitrate stayed the same as copper. Compare these two experiments. Experiment one, which is lithium nitrate, does not have a reaction because copper is below lithium on the activity series chart. Which means, which means copper is less active than lithium, so it cannot replace lithium. Experiment 2, which is silver nitrate, has reaction. Copper is more active than silver because it's higher than silver on the activity series chart. So copper can replace silver and react with nitrate. Our next experiment will be showing how a candle needs oxygen to burn. All you'll need is a candle, a lighter, and a jar to cover. You begin by lighting the candle, and when it is burning well, put a glass jar over the candle. It will go out in a short time because the flame has used all of the oxygen in the jar, and it can't get any more. Without oxygen, there is no way to convert the hydrogen molecules into the candle into energy, heat, and light. The air needs fuel, oxygen, and heat. You just remove oxygen. The flame burned up all the air in the jar, and there is no way for more to get in, so it burned up. 